All right, today's video is going to be geometrical contradictions in math. I've, I've invented a uh, geometric model that I think produces contradictions, which means that either there's an error with my model or that there's an error with the way mathematics is done. I believe that the error is systematic. The error is embedded within the systems of math we use. So let's take a look at this. All right, so um, what I have here is my symmetry model. And if you guys remember back to elementary school, you got, you probably use those red mirrors. There's like that red, and whenever you do like one thing on one end, like let's say I um, draw this shape on one end, what'll happen is it'll um, make a symmetrical image on the other end. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a model for positive and negative numbers using symmetry. And we could just simply write it out as a number line. We can make a one dimensional number line. One, two, three, four, five. And we would just reflect negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and negative five, right? So I don't think anyone would have a problem with that. You could ask any mathematician that and they wouldn't have a problem with me modeling um, modeling numbers through symmetry. All right, so when we do addition, um, we have no issues uh, with symmetry. So if I add one plus one, I get two, right? And if I add negative one plus negative one, I get minus two. So we have uh, a symmetry here. But when we get to multiplication, we run into an issue where we break the symmetry. So if I do negative two times negative two, I get four, right? And I transfer over to the positive domain. And if I do two times two, I also get four. So this breaks the symmetry uh, geometrically. And that sounds probably a bit confusing and weird and meaningless. And don't worry about that. It's gonna make sense in a little bit here. So what I wanna do is model this geometrically. And the first thing we have to look at is just some negative powers. So we're gonna make some squares. Um, three is a nice number. Let's start with negative three. Negative three to the power of one is negative three, right? Negative three uh, times itself one, one times is just negative three. Now negative three to the power of two equals positive nine, right? A negative times a negative is a positive. So we can't have two dimensional negative uh, geometry. Any sort of two dimensional shape couldn't exist in the negative domain because um, any two, two dimensional shape is gonna have positive geometry. Now the third thing is negative three to the power of three and we get negative 27. So that's interesting. Basically, you could come up with a formula for this, but you know, if your um, dimension is odd, then it could exist in a negative domain, and if it's even, then it could not. So now all I'm gonna do is create a cube. Let's, let's build a little uh, positive cube here. And it has the dimensions of three, um, three, three for the height, three for the depth, and three for the uh, length, right? Now, we're gonna uh, flip it. Okay, so these two objects are geometrically symmetrical. If I have that little reflection mirror, I could simply hold the cube here, and this would be a perfect reflection. Um, the distance from here to here would be the same as the distance from here to here. The distance from here to here would be the same as the distance from here to here, et cetera, right? Um, now, mathematically, this cube is valid. This is simply just a geometrical expression of negative three to the power of three. That's all this cube is. Yet, we have a really serious problem here, which is if we look at any of the surfaces of the cube, the area of this square is negative three 
times negative 3, which equals 9. So how is this possible? How can we possibly have a positive area when our cube exists entirely within a negative domain? I can literally just look at the square here and see that it occupies nine points of negative geometry. We can see the area is nine spaces of negative geometry. Um, 